Hi and welcome, this is the Prim Puffer Gilet and in this video I'm going to show you step by step how to sew it yourself. The pattern is available on my Etsy shop which is linked in the description below. This tutorial is quite specific to the way I assemble my garments, there is however a million other ways you could sew this to make this process quicker or easier. To sew the Prim Puffer Gilet you will need the Prim Puffer Gilet sewing pattern, 2 to 3 meters of fashion fabric, 2 meters of lining fabric, 2 meters of wadding or old pillows and another 2 meters of lining fabric, matching thread, hammer-on snap fastener buttons, a sewing machine and optionally an overlocker. The first step is of course to print the PDF pattern, making sure we select actual size for the scale. We then need to assemble the individual pages, making sure the pattern lines align. So if you are printing on A4 paper, it means you have to cut the edges of your paper first and then assembling the pages without overlapping them. We can then go ahead and cut our fabrics. For more details on this, please refer to the fabric guide that comes with the pattern. This pattern already includes seam allowance, which is one centimeter. The first step is to make our pattern pieces perfect which means we either have to line and fill the pieces or add wadding to them. I personally prefer the look that the line and fill method gives, however it is quicker to sew the pieces onto the wadding. Whilst the wadding method is quicker, I do think that it is more challenging to do than the line and fill method. In order to use the wadding method, we will need to cut our pattern pieces out of the fashion fabric and the wadding. Next, we would lay the fashion fabric onto the wadding with the wrong side facing the wadding, mark where we want to quilt the pattern and then sew along those lines with a matching thread. To make the assembling of the gilet easier, I would also recommend overlocking the edges of the pattern pieces when using the wadding method. If you don't have an overlocker, you could also use a zigzag stitch for this. The line and fill method is slightly more time consuming as we need to first of all line all our pattern pieces with some extra lining by laying them wrong sides together and sewing all along the edges of the pattern piece, leaving one side open for the filling. Once we've done that, we can mark our quilting lines onto our lining and then just top stitch all along those lines. This way we have now created pockets for our filling, which we can now start filling up. To fill my pieces I've simply used old pillows I had at home, you can however also purchase polyfill stuffing. Don't fill them up too much as it will make the gilet really heavy and it only takes a little amount of filling for a really good puffy effect. Once we have filled our entire pattern piece, we can then sew the edge of our pattern piece shut to secure all the filling inside the piece. Whether we use the wadding or the line and fill method, we will need to quilt the entire two lower back pieces, the front pieces and the hood. For the upper back piece, we will not need to quilt the entire pattern, the part below the fold line does not need to be quilted. For the placket pieces, we only quilt half of the pattern as they are assembled on a fold. The part we need to quilt is the part facing outside, the inner part does not need to be quilted. When quilting the plackets, it can also help to align them with the front or back piece and use them as guidance on where we need to top stitch. Quilting the pockets is optional, I however think they look better when quilted, just make sure you do not quilt into the seam allowance of the pockets. The way I top stitch them on this patterned version of the Prim Puffer Gilet is by sewing crisscross lines onto them. After we have quilted all of our pieces, we can move on to the assembly of the gilet. I started by lining my pocket pieces by sewing them right sides together, leaving the outer sides open. We can then take them to our front pieces and place them onto the piece following the guidance on the pattern and simply top stitching them onto the front piece making sure to leave the upper side open as this is where our hands need to slide in. And this is the pockets done. To assemble the gilet we need to start by attaching our plackets to the back and front pieces by sewing them right sides together. We can then attach the other side of our placket to our lining piece. Our back piece should look like this when we are done and if we now fold this in half along the middle of the placket, it leaves us with this. We need to repeat the same step for the other side and for the front pieces as well. So in total we need to do the step four times. After adding the plackets and lining to all four back and front pieces, we can go ahead and assemble the back piece by placing the upper back piece onto the lower back pieces. For this we need to separate the lining from our lower back piece and align the armhole curve from the upper back piece with the one on our lower back piece. We then just stitch these three layers together to make the next few steps easier. 
After we stitched our armhole together, we now need to pull the lining over and sew the lining and fashion fabric right sides together along this curve, making sure to leave one centimeter on each side for the seam allowance. This is however an optional step. You can skip this step if you are planning on finishing your armholes with bias tape instead, which is the easier way of sewing this. It does help if we snip the seam allowance and then we can turn this right sides out and repeat on the other side as well. Next we need to take both back pieces and align them with the upper back piece bottom that is folded up at this stage. We simply stitch all of these layers together to keep the back piece stable and for the lower back piece to be lifted up. Now we can go ahead and close the shoulder seams for the fashion fabric. We simply fold the lining to the side and align both shoulders and sew along the edges. Now we need to repeat the same with the shoulder seam for the lining. So we take our upper back lining piece and align it to the front lining piece, sewing it right sides together. To finish the armholes, I'm using the burrito roll method, placing the lining and fashion fabric right sides together, whilst the other side of the gilet is scrunched up inside this little gilet burrito. We can sew along the remainder of the armhole, then turn everything right sides out and pull the other side of the gelée back out afterwards. This leaves us with this nice armhole and we of course also repeat this on the other side. If you are not a fan of this method, you could simply continue the assembly of the gelée, leaving the armholes raw and later encase them with some bias tape made from your fashion fabric. This would be a much easier way, however I wanted to try the burrito roll method as well. Now we of course need to close the back lining, which I do by pulling the lower back pieces up through the neckline of the upper piece and folding them right sides together, making sure I really get into the edges of this seam. This definitely is a little tricky, however if you have decided to finish your armholes with bias tape, this step will be much easier. After I stitched these together, I had a little gap still left, which I closed with a pine stitch I quickly sewed by hand. To close the side seams of the gelée, we open each side piece so we can align the entire fashion fabric sides together and stitch along that edge. We repeat the same step on the same side with the lining and once we have sewn along the entire side edges we should have this fully lined side piece. Of course these two steps need to be repeated on the other side as well. Moving on to the hood, we simply sew both outer hood pieces together along the curve and repeat the same with the lining. We can then attach the fashion fabric hood to the right side of our gilet, making sure we align the center of the hood with the center of the back piece and pin out from there. We need to sew along the entire edge. And of course we repeat that same step with the lining. To finish the hood off we can simply fold the raw edges inside and top stitch the entire edge.
An alternative way of doing this would again be the burrito roll method, however we would need to leave a small gap of about 10cm to pull the rest of the gelée through and then close this with a pliant stitch by hand. We then need to hem the bottom of the gelée, which I did by folding the raw edges inside and top stitching along the entire bottom. Alternatively, you could stitch this by hand with a pliant stitch to go for that seamless look, however I did not have the patience for that. The very last step is to add our hammer on snap fastener buttons. For this we puncture the fabric, place both sides of the button around the fabric and hammer this in. Your snap fasteners should come with instructions so just make sure you follow these. One thing to be mindful about is that whilst on the top placket you place the fastener on the outer edge of the placket, for the inside placket you place it on the inner edge of the placket so that the plackets perfectly align when wearing the gelée. And that concludes this massive DIY undertaking that leaves us with a feeling of accomplishment but also a beautiful DIY gilet that is just perfect for the spring and autumn. I personally like taking on big projects although they can be daunting and I find them incredibly rewarding. Also this seems a lot harder than it is and if you do choose to simply finish your raw edges with bias tape then you will be flying through this project. I for one love my prim puffer gilet and hope you do too. Let me know if you have any questions otherwise thank you so much for watching.